Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another new episode of Alt Street TV at our new headquarters here. And lots of things have happened, right guys? We're back. And, and this is the first episode in a, a long, 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 long time. time. Right, and we've been busy. But today we have the CEO of Alt Street guys himself to share with you um, some of his thoughts on sneaker culture and you know why we do what we do. So, so what we want to do is this. The first time Jonathan and me actually ever did a recording yep. was in Jonathan's podcast. And yeah. that was quite a nice conversation. And after that, we started doing our sneaker reviews. The reason we want to bring back Oxtree TV today is that we actually want to give you a bit more of a peek behind the scenes at Oxtree. We're starting with some casual chats and just some sneaker related content uh, coming from people in the team. And, and today uh, we decided let's start with me, even though I know there's a bunch of interviews with me online. Uh, we still wanted to go ahead and, and get into yeah, some stuff. Yeah. So this is going to be a more cultural topic and we are going to start with, of course, the big question, you know. What got you into sneakers and what triggered your passion, guys? So actually for me it started when I was, I know I was around 10 years old because it was in uh, when uh, my Amsterdam football team won the Champions League in 1995, betraying my age here. Yeah. I got first hooked on a pair of Nike Air Max on of my course, classmates' feet. <laughs> yeah. uh, they were like dark green and for me it was like, wow, you can actually walk on air. That's That's just... Crazy, yeah. and it, so from that moment on, of course, my mother thought they were too expensive, so yeah. I didn't get them. <laughs> That's uh, everyone's parents. <laughs> everyone's story, right? But when I started to make a bit of my own money, I started buying yeah. more and more shoes. The time has come, and then of course, it, it didn't stop there, right? So what was a moment in sneaker culture or history that you feel um, really changed the game? I think for me, even though it might be a little cliche, uh, Yeezy and Off-White mm -hmm. in recent history are by far the most impactful events. I think there's mm -hmm. this iconic photo uh, of Kanye, Virgil Abloh and a few others. I, I'm blanking on the names right now. We All the famous people it. in one photo. Uh, right? At the Paris Fashion Week standing at this gate, right? In ah, yeah, yeah, I think I've seen that photo uh, as well. Yes, yes, yes. And, and that, that was like the, the, the new, the revolution the new school. In, in street <laughs> fashion and actually started bringing street fashion to, uh, to, to the, the masses, market. right? To the masses as well. Um, yeah. Like Yeezy, I think for me, what Air Max represented, for me, for a lot of young people, Yeezy represents that in 2016 when, when they first hit. That got a lot of people into sneakers. And um, it's really innovative, man. I think the, that was a really, truly innovative period. period. Feel like to wear a new pair of kicks, guys. Wow. Um, actually, it's funny, we ask this question to everyone we interview online, right? Yeah. I haven't really yeah. thought about what my own answer would be, but I think some... So, I don't know if I'm like really vain, but what I always do when I wear new shoes is I look down a lot and also look at myself in windows, in mirror. right? <laughs> Uh, whenever you see like past a storefront or a mall, yeah. you can see yourself wearing your new kit. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, for me, it just feels like, um, you know, wearing a new pair of shoes just makes you feel a bit more happy, yeah, a bit true, more true. It's confident. A, it's an intangible feeling, exactly. right? Yeah. And so what are some of the, you know, creators, designers or brands that you, you look up to and, and you're kind of into at the moment? Uh, at the moment, so I think the, the a lot of people have been watching New Balance come up, right? Mm. So I'm, I'm wearing now, I'm wearing one of the protection pack, which is yes. actually not even a collab. And yeah. I still think it's really great. We did the review of the grey yes, one yes, the gray when one. it first came out, we were gushing yeah, over yes. it as well. Glad um, I copped it. So yeah, I, I, have, I, have, two, I have two colors. Uh, but I think like New Balance has been doing some, some cool stuff and some of their collaborators as well, like Soleil, Bambury, yeah. who did a couple of really nice collabs uh, with New Balance. Um, Joe Fresh Goods. Mm, Joe right? Fresh Goods, I, yeah. I, I got the yellow 550s. Yes, yes. What I like about him is sort of the storytelling. There's this, I think we reviewed it before, mm. um, one of the 990 models, I think, that references like, the stuff you would get in the school canteen as a kid. Yeah. So I like this kind of storytelling. And mm. uh, in the same vein, one of my favorites in the past uh, two years is uh, definitely Amar mm, uh, mm. I, I sort of accidentally Copped the Air Force One High, which not a lot of Excellent. people know. Yeah. I was like, that's actually a sick pair, yeah. and, and it's very, very limited. Yeah, yeah. But then Amamaniere really started to break through with the uh, with the Jordan Three, the Jordan correct, One. Correct, correct. Um, that was the Air Force One was the the black and the white one. It's right? black, the black and it's one. it had some reflective a lot 3M of 3M, material, yeah. right? It's yeah. like a like a Tron type yeah, of yeah, fly. Yeah. Yeah. Futuristic shoe. That was ahead of his time. What are some of the current sneakers in your rotation? So New Balance, these mm. uh, uh, protection pack. 2002 R's, mm -hmm. the 550s, 
Then I, I wear the Armand Maniers quite a lot, the Jordan 3, the yep. Jordan 1. Um, what else? Air Max, the Para Air Para, Max. of course, of course. Uh, the last one. Um, I just got the Casina Air Max, but yeah. I, actually, <laughs> I actually got them used. So with Oxtreet, uh, I don't ah, know. Ah, yes, yes, with the Quick new plug. We recently used launched category. used sneakers, and new with effects. And um, my first buy was a pair of Casina Air Max for 200 Singapore dollars instead of like 290 or something. A great steal. Super steal. And to be honest, I couldn't even tell they were used. Yeah, pretty good condition, yeah. right? So, you know, other than sneakers, what are some of your treasured uh, possessions or objects that you collect? Uh, so, I wouldn't even call myself a collector, okay. to be honest. Okay. I've, I've, when I was a kid, a lot of people would be into collecting things, Pokemon cards, yeah, whatever, Pokemon all cards. kinds of stuff. <laughs> um, I'm not a very good collector. I buy and I wear, I, I, I buy and use. But some of my most cherished Possessions, I would say, are uh, a guitar. I, I play guitar in my free time, um, and I have a I have a pretty nice bicycle that I ride ah, around okay. Singapore. Yes. Yeah. Um, when it comes to other collectible stuff, I used to be a bit more into watches. So okay, I have a, okay. actually have a 1969 vintage uh, Omega Speedmaster. But 1969. I, yeah, it's yeah. like it's just in the year of the moon landing, okay. and that was the first watch on the moon. So there's a whole story around that that particular ah, watch. Yeah, that's, um, yeah. But I, I never wear it anymore since I switched to uh, Apple Watch. Apple Watch, right? Yeah. yeah, which many people have as yeah. well. So guys, what's uh, your ultimate holy grail sneaker that you uh, have been lusting over and haven't got your hands on? Yeah, I think there's a so there's a few. Some I used to say the old. 2009 Para and Pata Air Max, mm. the cherry wood in yep, particular. But I, I feel nowadays it's going to be too difficult to find a pair in good condition. So mm. I've kind mm. of called that one a loss already. Uh, more recent history, I would say the Union uh, Jordan 1s. Oh, Black the Union. Okay, yeah. okay. Yep. Uh, and probably the, the off white Jordan 1s as well, the, the white ones. Mm. Oh, and the off white Air Max 90s, the mm. white color ones. The, oh, from the, origi some of the, the original, the 10. Some of the original, right? the 10, yeah. I, I really, yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm really bummed that I missed out on, on most of them. And mm. those are some of the ones that I really, uh, really Enjoy, would love to right? have. Yeah. And currently, what are some of the sneaker silhouettes that you feel you're enjoying at the moment? Yeah, like I said, New Balance, um, 2002R, 550s. Mm. I don't really like the... I mean, the GR 550s, they're, they're great, but I tend to gravitate a bit more towards the Collapse. Mm. Um, and then I think the classics for me. I will always have Jordan 1 highs in my yes. rotation. As most of us. I will have, always yeah. have Air Max 1s and Air Max 90s in my, in yeah, my rotation. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think like maybe I'm also a bit of a, of, of a cliche reflection of the culture but dunks are a little bit like becoming less important in my rotation mm. uh, although I still have a few of them uh, I used to wear them a lot more two years ago than I do today mm. what's your opinion on um, New Balance recent strong growth uh, I, I think it's great I think it's really really great the New Balance is just ha have committed to a certain level of quality in most of their silhouettes yeah um, I think with the 550s, they've taken a smart step to launch something a, a bit more on the sort of dunk mm. low. Yep, yep, the aesthetic kind yeah, of Yeah, and also right, a, yeah. a lot a lot lower price. Yep, yeah. Um, and they've, they've done, they've run the playbook very smartly in the last couple of years, right? Mm. With good collabs, not too many, um, just steady, steady execution. And, and that played in together with a moment where I think people were starting to get a little bit bored of of, um, of, of the basic Nike churning out the same stuff mm. all the time. Mm. More Jordans, more Dunks. Yep. Yep. So I think it's just a natural revolution of things. Mm. Mm. Um, but it makes me very happy to see another another the brand rising brand. as yeah. a collectible uh, sneaker. And so um, what are your thoughts on current sneaker trends maybe in Asia versus the rest of the world or is there any particular um, country or city that you would like to talk about how you've seen the tr trend kind of evolve? Well, I feel that purely from a cultural perspective, maybe a brand like Casina would have less traction in Europe than, mm. than here, right? Because yeah. it's Korean. Yeah. Um, that goes for ADLV as well, yeah. for example, yeah. right? Of course, in of streetwear. Course. So 
what are what is for me really uh, like a turning point globally is that 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 K culture is has gone global in mm. the past couple of years, yeah, right? And it's influenced a lot of the like um, what you see on Instagram. Yeah, what people and, are it, and it's yeah. starting to influence the West. So it's kind of like mm. A, mm. a really cool reversal of of cultural influences. Mm. But apart from that, I feel a lot of it when it comes to country by country differences is also comfort related. So mm. Jordan Six, Jordan Seven. No one would be crazy enough to wear that in Singapore. It's yep, just too that's hot. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So I think that plays <laughs> into it uh, definitely. Like there's certain stuff that is more suited to to cold weather. Yes. That, that, yes, that you yes. won't really just doesn't Very really true. Very fly true. Yeah, in, yeah. in Singapore. And then I think there's also differences in what is the anchor point around sneaker culture in a country. So Malaysia, we see a lot more um, anchoring on skateboarding. Yep. Uh, whereas in, in Singapore, um, it's a, it's a bit more diverse, and in the Philippines, it's definitely basketball, right? Mm. Which anchors the, the 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 aesthetic and the mm. community. So Very true. those are also things that kind of like I think drive the mm. differences. But but I have to say that it's if we look at actual per country data on what people are buying, mm. it's actually pretty similar. Like ah, yes, yes, yes. Panda dunks. <laughs> Panda dunks, right? Air Force Ones. Uh, <laughs> G Dragon Air Force Ones, right? Things like that. So, um, what do sneakers mean to you? For me, you, your outfit really revolves around your sneakers. Mm -hmm. They can elevate the whole outfit. Yeah, I can elevate the whole outfit. But for me, it often starts there. So, I, I most of the most days, I kind of have an idea which pair I, I want to wear, and mm. and base the rest of what I what I choose to wear around around that. Mm. So for me, it's like the, the cornerstone, literally and of, figuratively. Of the outfit. Right. You are the foundation. Anchored, anchored to the yeah. floor based on your, <laughs> yeah, yes, on yes, your yes. sneakers. Good kick solve most exactly. problems, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, everyone has a sneaker origin story and then it's it's well documented that you have started with the MX, right? And so why the MX? Why has it endured, you know, time to be your favorite sneaker? Yeah, I, I think you have this connection with what got you started on something mm, mm. in a way right that's also why i believe the yeezy 350 is gonna have staying power because okay. so many people got started on that shoe mm. um, but for me the air max it, it represented something that i couldn't have and that was so clearly different and to me better than the things that i could have mm. like at the time at the time rebox or whatever yeah. else was available in the store so um yeah, I just love the aesthetics of it. It's very much in balance. Yeah, and um, it's comfortable. You, the air bubble is just nice. Yeah, yeah. The way it, it just fits is perfect. It really fits my feet. I think my feet have maybe adjusted to it over time. Um, and then the practicality of it, like coming back to what I, how I started this, uh, or the previous question, it's about comfort as well. Mm -hmm. and, and Air Max, I can, I can walk around in them the whole day. The whole day, right? Yeah. So guys, um, you know, you could have started any company on this planet, right? Yeah, especially when it comes to a digital startup. Um, why did you choose the sneaker market? So before Oak Street, I was working on launching and growing consumer marketplaces. So yep. Oak Street is also what you could call a consumer focused marketplace. Mm. So um, I got some experience in what it takes to build those. And there's this saying, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. I think for, for me, my hammer was marketplaces and I was looking for problems that, I was experiencing problems in my day-to-day -day life. Mm, mm. And I tended to think of solutions in terms of, okay, what kind of marketplace can Makes solve sense. this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with sneakers, um, I was having a lot of trouble buying the stuff I wanted mm, on, mm. On, on, on Carousel. Mm. Like th that is the story that really triggered Oxide, where I was trying to buy a pair of Jordans on Carousel. Yep. And it was so difficult. I had to wait at an MRT station for <laughs> a half an hour because the seller was yeah. way late. And then when the seller showed up, he told me he was late because the, his previous buyer yeah. I, I didn't see, show I see, up. I see. The, usual, the usual challenges. So just a lot of uh, friction mm. and problems in that space that I thought we could try and solve with, with, uh, with building a business around that. Okay. And of course, it's well documented online that, um, you know, Serving the sneaker community and, and servicing them is super tough, right? The customer is always tough. And as a customer of Off Street myself, right? 
I, I must say that uh, Oak Street is one of the brands that um, doesn't shy away from consumer feedback and criticism, right? So how, what, what um, gave you this belief to build the company around such a tough target demographic? And how do you see this service quality scaling as the company grows? Whether they're tough or not, I'm not sure, to be honest. I think they're just regular people who are spending a lot of money on a pair of shoes. And mm. they, they, want to make sh they want to be sure that they're real. They want to mm. be sure that they have somewhere to go mm. when something's wrong, right? Mm. And those were some of the big, big problems in the market. Yeah, um, yeah. And still are, in my opinion, with mm. just really, really bad customer service. Companies making promises that they're not willing to keep. Um, in, in like the open reselling market, yep, yep. massive scams, right? <laughs> Pre-order pre scams. Zade Kicks, shout out to Zade <laughs> <Yeah>. Kicks. <laughs> Recently, right? FBI most wanted. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of uh, scams in the space and, right. and, and, and in my opinion, and I feel very strongly about this, if you're operating in a low trust space, mm. more information really helps to build trust. Mm. So that's why whenever we get a question, um, we tend to explain in a lot more detail what's going on. Mm, and see. We, we've seen, there are so many examples globally of companies that really focus on um, having a more authentic relationship with their customers mm. by, by, not, by trying not to hide behind terms and conditions or like not being too mm. rigid. Mm. Uh, so I really took that approach to Oak Street as well. And, you know, of course we have rules. Yeah, of course, of course. But at the end of the day... To prevent abuse and things like that. At the end of the day, yeah. we are also sneakerheads, right? Yeah. And, and we understand that people are spending a lot of money and maybe they're mm. buying their first ever pair on the resale market, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess we, we try to we try to take the view that we, we trust our, our, our customers a little bit more um, mm. and, and sort of make sure that we, we give them as much uh, as we can and mm. explain to them why, also if there's a limit, why that's the limit. Right? Mm -hmm. Understand, yeah, I remember the early days uh, when you were starting off street, I remember you replied a lot of the DMs and questions yourself even. Still, yeah, I yeah. still do. <laughs> so, so for everyone who wants to, everyone who wants to get in touch, um, I, there's an email address g at oxtree.com um, that goes directly to me and, and I'll definitely read everything that comes into there. Good to know guys. So uh, now, you know, the online e-commerce space is hyper competitive and we see even like um, huge giant platforms bringing in replica sneakers, right? So what are your thoughts around that? So, okay, I think to take one step back, the first thing to realize is that are also marketplaces. Mm. So it, it's not them bringing in Yep. The replicas, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just that they don't have any kind of guarantee uh, around authenticity. Yeah. yeah, and there's too much volume. Yeah, so uh, they just choose not to make that a priority, right? Okay. They're yeah. Also, generally, I would I would say they focus on like much smaller ticket size items, right? Mm. I, I think. Yeah, yeah. Like normally, people would go cables. to them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Handphone cables, tripod, right, right, right. Phone covers, that yeah. kind of stuff. So. So I honestly think it's a bit of a different ball game. Um, mm. But generally, I would say that if if you care about your products being being authentic, mm. and that goes hand in hand to being willing to to pay for authenticity for the authentic product, then you you should rely on on those platforms, right? You should you should definitely come to Oak Street instead, yeah, where yeah. where yeah. we we have experts actually who look at sneakers all day mm, and, and mm. really know what to look out for. Yeah. So. So yeah, I mean, I don't have any moral objections against replicas. If yeah. people want to buy replicas and, and spend a hundred bucks, uh, who am I to judge? But yeah. what we solve is people spending the 500 bucks. And they want the real stuff. They right? shouldn't get it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so um, what, what steps uh, is Oak Street taking to try to curb um, the appearance of, of reps on the Oak Street platform? So every product that gets sold gets shipped to Oak Street first mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. authenticated in, on hand. Yep, yep. So um, we have a very exacting standard for authentication, mm -hmm. even for quality control. Although I'll admit the last part is sometimes a little bit subjective, yep, right? Yep, what, correct, what, it, right? What still constitutes okay yep, yep. and whatnot. Um, and then at the end of the day, we everything is covered by our authenticity guarantee. So mm. if, if you do get it and you find it to be fake, 
uh, or you have any kind of issue with it, mm. just the off-street guarantee. You can come to us, yep, right? Yep, yep. And we're not gonna have disappeared. Yeah. Into the, into the, into the yeah. Can still look for guys to this day, right? <laughs> Sleep well, fellow sneakerheads.